He sure did. We have one more match for you in this round, friends, so let's jump into Zachary Keeney versus Muhan Yu, Esper Midrange, the boogeyman this weekend, versus mm -hmm. Jeskai Storm. So you're all familiar with this one, friends. Let's see how Muhan Yu does with this deck. It is game number two. Muhan Yu is up one at the moment, so let's take a look here at the opening hands and get game number two underway. Pretty good one here for Zachary Keeney. Has a turn two play, has a spell pierce, and has Rafine, the scheming seal. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting to see the deck that we just saw, you know, completely combo off. Now have to be paired against a deck that's very disruptive. Not only can you have duresses, which can, you know, put a wrench in big score and unexpected windfalls, but, you know, you have di Disdainful Stroke, you have actual removal that can deal with dragons in Infernal Grasp and Vanishing Versus. So this is a matchup that I think a lot of the Esper players are pretty fine to play against because they do think they have the tools to deal with it. Yeah, looking at that first hand there for um, Muhan Yu, it's a little bit not great. You know, you had your colors, you had expressive iterations, but ugh, mm -hmm. that one gave me a little bit of heart palpitations there. So sends that back. And uh, we're going to kick things off here with Rafine's Tower. And Big get draw this there. Game underway. Big draw there to get that blue source because playing mm. Sajiri Step is really not what you want. You really don't have any real white cards in this Jeskai deck. I know it is a Jeskai Storm deck, but Sajiri Step, <laughs> show of confidence. You don't cast those unless you have a gold span dragon out, which then creates, you know, the white mana to cast it. So you really don't want to play ins on your side of the battlefield. Heck no. So a good decision there and a good draw as well as we get things underway. That Luminarch Aspirant was not long for this world as we saw the Voltage Surge take care of it. So a second copy of Rafine, not what Zachary Keeney wanted to see. On the other side of things, several options available to Muhan. You could just uh, foretell Behold the Multiverse or could go Expressive Duration, but that isn't usually something we see happen on turn two. Yeah, not really, unless you're really desperate. Um... Probably going to see, wow. Okay, just guaranteeing that we can get land number three. This will kind of leave the door open for Rafine to hit the battlefield. Now, Torch That's Breath a... is a nice one that you have here, mm -hmm. being able to target a blue card to make it cost two less. So it's a shock on surface value. So if you play three, uh, you can break through it and can't be countered. Countered is a part of ward, so we saw that ward yep. not really having to be paid. But <laughs> the thing you don't want to see right after you just is do that, Ailey, one. is a second yeah. one. Yep. yep, so the second one coming in handy there for Keeney and has the spell pierce back up now to yep. get rid of a spell once the ward has been cost, if there is another copy of, uh, you know, another removal spell in hand here. So let's see how Muhan Yu approaches this turn. What's he gonna go for first? Yeah, and this is usually that turn where you want to be playing big score. You want to be playing unexpected windfall. And Zachary Keeney is like, I want you to be playing big score. I want you to be playing unexpected windfall with that spell pierce in hand. Because <laughs> that is just such a disadvantage. Not only paying four mana to get it countered by a one mana spell, but also getting two for one uh, in that scenario is pretty brutal. So spell pierce being an excellent card in standard these days. Yeah, it certainly is. As we'll see, Tenacious Underdog hit the battlefield alongside Rafine. There was an option to blitz it out, but value is having mm -hmm. the creature stick around. Here, the Spell Pierce is considering countering Behold the Multiverse. Shields are down for Muhan Yu, so leaving himself open to any removal spell, basically, at this point, as he can't protect the creatures on the battlefield. Yep, and Zachary giving us a nice... Uh, kind of lesson in <laughs> arena there by setting that stop at upkeep that just makes sure and it doesn't give away that well Zachary has nothing if you just go so then he's able to put on full control uh, so just a, an expert play from someone who knows their way around a magic card I'll tell you that oh for sure there's a land thankfully so another option there for Muhan Yu in terms of what shenanigans he wants to get done this turn, but unfortunately only the one red source, so Spyfield Hazard, Voltage Shirt, or a Strangle are the options here. Now, does he want to get rid of this Tenacious Underdog? It can just come back from the graveyard using its Blitz cost. How do you navigate this turn? Yeah, it's a tough one because you still just can't really deal with Rafine in any meaningful way, so you're not mm -hmm. really looking to deal with that. Decides not to Voltage Surge right away um instead trying to wait till after combat 
Yeah, so that gives Rafine an extra connive here. Or no, it doesn't see it as, as Yeah, it doesn't so see it once the, the ability goes, yeah. So going for the counter here, it's gonna get rid of Amaria's call. Rafine's tower in hand can cycle something away. There is also the frost of the, the frost of the cave giant. Yes, that's not right. The cave of the frost <laughs> dragon. There we go, we'll get there. That can add to the attackers. Yeah, and right now, not too much for Zachary. You know, being able to cycle, this should give the red flag, like, okay, it's time to cast this spell before <laughs> another counter spell is drawn here. This is yeah. perfect Go, card. go, go. Yes. <laughs> perfect card for Muan Yu. Oh, another big score drawn. Oh, and can cast it. Yeah, do it. Yeah, and, and here's the scenario, and here's what you kind of have to think about when you're the Jeskai Storm deck, is like, do you really mm. want to play all these big scores and unexpected windfalls when you have to get rid of treasure? Or do you wait till your yeah. next turn to then play it to gather even more treasure so that when you top deck Lear, so when you top deck Goldspan Dragon, it's a way over the top effect. Yeah. And yeah, the patient discipline play indeed, whereas, you know, on my side, I'm just like, yeah, no counter spells <laughs> available, do it. <laughs> cards, cards, cards. Cards, give me, yes, exactly. Oh yeah, Cards, me talking of. <laughs> uh, we've got wedding announcement here alongside the tenacious underdog which can hit the battlefield so this is a pretty good board being built here for zachary keeney he's going to hopefully dodge any uh big sweeper style effects but i don't think we have burned down the house in this list yeah and yeah, this is really like it. yeah it doesn't look like it and this is really showing the power of these esper decks you know we look at zachary's hand last turn you just had one land and you know, no real action in hand, but now you attack with Rafine, you draw a card for the turn, all of a sudden you get to double spell. And and even if you didn't draw those spells, you still get to bring back Tenacious Underdog. So you always have something to do with your mana. And oh yeah, we even have a backup where you can animate that cave if you don't have anything to do. <laughs> so Esper is a deck that is always using its mana at a very high efficient, efficiency rate. Here comes the Smoldering Egg, one of these uh, pretty decent creatures that can just get in the way here and eventually flip over to become a very menacing threat indeed for this battlefield that Zachary has so carefully curated. Spikefield Hazard and a Fading Hope available to him, to Muhan Yu, to get rid of these other two creatures on the battlefield right now if he wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's just a decision, how many treasures do you want to actually use because uh, Muhan Yu has been setting this up very well by getting a bunch of treasures so that whenever he draws uh, Lear to be able to play it, now you're going to be able to just have the world at your fingertips and then flip <laughs> Smoldering Egg and then really deal with everything here. So next turn should be an yeah. insane turn for Muhan Yu. Yeah. Oh, yes. We're going to see the Smoldering Egg flip, but in response to this attack, Rafine... Might be getting bounced here. Let's see what the target is for this Fading Hope. Oh, yeah. Got to get, get rid of, of here, another buddy. treasure there. Nice. So no cards for you. Fading Hope gets a scry as Rafine is 3 CMC or less. One more counter on the Smoldering Egg. So if we can get Leer down next turn and start casting some spells, we have a dragon online. Yeah, these draw steps from Rafine here are going to be really important if you can find a way to deal with either Leer or Smoldering Egg. And if not, it definitely could be trouble. And we see a Fading Hope on oh, yeah. top there. Or excuse me, yeah, of course, uh, yep. the draws don't happen if the target is no longer there. Yeah, so Rafine has a big, big sad about it, but we're going to get another Tenacious Underdog down on the battlefield. And now Zachary Keeney is just... All systems go, you know, pedal to the metal. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. As Spikefield Hazard, oh, Cheeky, is going to exile the Tenacious Underdog because the spell says if it would die this turn, well, it's <laughs> not in the graveyard. So that is a very heads-up play there by Muhan Yu. Absolutely. And we left that Fading Hope on top to protect Lear here. Now there's another Fading Hope in the yard. <laughs> Hello, Magic Cards. <laughs> And now, I mean, now it's just protect Ew. the Leer, protect the Smoldering yep. Egg. You have two one-drops here, so you can cast one of them to flip the egg. Then all of a sudden you have two blockers that are going to be able to step in front of these three twos. You'll have two mm -hmm. four toughness creatures that can cleanly block. And then you also just have Fading Hope to bounce Leer if a Vanishing Verse is found or something like that. Yeah. 
So Strangle being called on to take care of one of these copies of Tenacious Underdog. That one can come back. But now, I said all systems go. It's now the other way around as Muhan Yu has an Ashmouth Dragon and spells to trigger it as well. So Tenacious Underdog dealing two damage out for its Blitz cost. Here it comes one more time. Let's just shove and try and get this game over and done with because, yeah, active Leer, Ashmouth Dragon, danger, danger. Yeah, I think this is a pretty telltelling sign for anybody watching the broadcast right now. If Muan Yu is attacking, it's probably very good for Muan <laughs> Yu. I'll tell you that. So that's confidence in showing that like you have so many oh, yeah. spells available. Uh, things are really going his way. For sure. And I don't know if there's any lifelink cures or anything in this deck. You know, obscure interceptor type effect, but. There's a Lisa on the sideboard for Keeney, but I don't know if we're going to see it. That Wandering Emperor is a big draw. I don't yeah, know we, if we're going to get another turn, though, honestly. Yeah, on we only need here. three spells. GG. We only need three spells here, you know. <laughs> that is uh, probably going to be okay to find here. Yeah, I th I mean, you know, it's a little bit close, but I think, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. pretty much got it one and done there. So, jeez, like... Muhan Yu, Jeskai Storm getting it done with the baby dragon in the deck, but... Uh, very convincing victory, and these Jazz Guy Storm players might be onto something, Corey. These Esprit guys are, they're sweating bricks. 